fear and doubt the rest of my life. So what I did was on January 28th, I joined. January of 2008, I joined Toastmasters. That was one of the shifts. And the first speech that I gave <coughs> was about my life and my tattoo that I got on my 45th birthday. I still have the notes from this right here. And I have the comments that Bob Donnelly gave me in that first speech. Here's what Bob said. Did the speaker talk clearly and audibly? Yes, he was confident, he had good volume, he used vocal variety, he casually looked down at his notes and it wasn't obvious that I looked at my notes. The other thing he said, what did you like about the presentation? He said, his confidence, his willingness to be open with the audience. Because of that feedback like that, and then having another conversation with Glenn Pritchard. It was in my third speech as we were walking out. Glenn said, Trace, you're finding your voice. That was the first shift, was to know that through positive feedback and evaluations, it started to change that voice. The second thing that came up to help me understand this voice was I felt I wasn't good enough as far as a coach. I didn't have my certification yet. Who's going to want to listen to me? Who's going to want to uh, use my services as a coach? Because I wasn't certified. So I took it upon myself to get certified as a coach. 2008, I remember going to Cincinnati. I spent two days in Cincinnati as part of my coaching certification. And I remember the instructor doing a training session much like this. And she was talking about self-imposed limitations. And she had this. And she said, here's what she said. She said, now you guys uh, don't want to be here listening to me talk about coaching. You'd much rather be at home with your families or in your hotel. And I said to myself, she's got what I got. That inner negative voice. And for her to be so authentic, to say that. And once I understood what she was talking about with this, she actually gave us a book to read called Taming Your Gremlins by Rick Carson. And through this book, I learned about the voice. And then Tommy C, I remember asking Tommy C, Tommy, what can I do to get over this fear? He said, Trace, read this book. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And there's a couple things from this book that you need to know. Here's one of those things, it's four words. You can handle it. That simple. You can handle it. And then the other thing that I learned from this book, really a big shift for me is, there is no failure. It's only feedback. There are no mistakes. It's only lessons learned. And when I started to view my life like that, in this fear of public speaking, and this voice, changed the game. It's just feedback and lessons learned. So I started reading and understanding a little bit about the voice. Another significant shift for me was, as part of this, doing the, the training for the coaching, I sought counseling because it was so amplified. Went to counseling for four years, probably about three and a half years into that counseling with Dr. Dennison up in Powell. I, I, I remember going about three and a half years into it, and she'd always ask me, what are your greatest wins since the last time we talked? And I was talking to her about some of the great wins and starting to understand and over, overcome that criminal voice. And then she'd ask me, what challenges did you face from the last time? And I didn't have any challenges. So here's what happened during that time that I was with her at that moment. I was on the couch. I wasn't laying on the couch. I was, I was sitting on the couch. And she said, Trace, you are good enough. And with that, just huge weight came off of me. And I slumped down in the, on the couch like that. It's like, I am? I am good enough? I remember right after that, I actually went home. And I looked in the mirror. And I said, I am good enough. So what I learned from that was through the positive feedback, through reading and understanding, and understanding cognitive dissonance, 
distorted thinking, self-imposed limitations, that this wasn't telling me the truth. It doesn't lead me to my authentic self. So when I go out and talk to different classes, talk about the coaching, I'm always talking about this voice. And I used to think what I would do with this gremlin voice was I'd throw it around or stomp on it or whatever. I don't want to do that. I want to keep him close to me because I know he's always up to something. You see, when I grow and learn and develop, I move on. And he brings no value. He wants to keep me in fear and self-doubt and being afraid of everything. So what I've learned to do is to learn to successfully negotiate with my inner negative voice, my gremlin voice, to be more authentic and know that as I am, I am good.